Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 45001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. video I'm going to cover clause 613 determination of legal requirements and other requirements which falls under the overarching clause 6 planning. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Before we get stuck into the actual clause requirements, it is important to note that the title of this clause includes legal requirements and other requirements. So we probably all understand what legal requirements is referring to, but what about other requirements? It's a bit vague, isn't it? If you use the process of deduction, obviously, the other requirements are not the legal requirements. So what could these other requirements be? They can be your own organization's requirements, so your own system, policies, procedures, contractual requirements, which could be from your customers or even suppliers. Your customers may have specific OH&S requirements for you to access their work site, for instance. Employment agreements, your own organization will more than likely have in place employee agreements, which do state certain OH&S requirements. There could be industry standards. So depending on what industry you're in, the overarching industry body or organization may have OH&S requirements. It could be voluntary associations, so your organization may have taken on board a voluntary cause that may support an OH&S cause, like a mental health cause, for example. So you can see just a few examples of what might fall under this vague heading of other requirements. Okay, let's get started. There are three key points in this clause that all link back to the opening statement of the organization shall establish, implement, and maintain a process or processes too. And then the three key points are provided. So I'm now going to share these three key points, knowing that you have the understanding that these are all about being established, implemented, and maintained as processes in your OHS management system. That way I don't have to repeat that sentence over and over again. So to start off with, we have point A which states determine and have access to up-to-date legal requirements and other requirements that are applicable to its hazards, OH&S risks and OH&S management system. Sounds simple enough, right? Two statements here stand out to me, determine and have access to. First step is that you need to determine what the legal requirements and other requirements are that are relevant to your activities, products and services. And of course, the hazards identified, which of course we covered in clause 6121, hazard ID. Be sure to check out that video if you want a refresher. So where can you find out what requirements are relevant to your business? It really depends on the resources you have within your organization. I say this as I see a lot of larger businesses have their own internal legal teams. And of course, these legal teams are the experts in identifying and determining what is relevant. Now, of course, we don't always have access to these resources. If we are a smaller business, it is more than likely that we won't have our own internal legal team. What I normally see in these circumstances is that the business will have a consultant or a subscription that provides this information. A subscription I see around a lot is safety law, which falls under a company called Environmental Essentials. Yes, they provide both Enviro law and safety law. 
Having this provided externally does take a lot of pressure off you and puts it in the hands of the professionals. That way you can spend your time doing what you're good and knowledgeable at. However, if you do want to take this on yourself, OHNS Law is reasonably accessible online. You just need to make sure that you access each state's requirements, particularly if your business conducts activities in different states. If your business conducts activities internationally, you also need to be aware of what is relevant and where when it comes to OHNS legislation in other countries. Now, remember the two keywords, determine and have access to that I mentioned earlier. All of these so far is about how you will determine your requirements. Don't forget that once you have determined them, you need to ensure that you have access to them also. This might not mean to just have access to the legal jargon documents. It will also mean access to how you will apply these requirements within your business through your activities, products, and services, which is a great segue to the next point in this clause, which states B, determine how these legal requirements and other requirements apply to the organization and what needs to be communicated. So somehow you have to interpret what the legal requirements and other requirements are and figure out what actions or processes you will take within your OHS management system to ensure they are applied. This is where it is handy to have a legal team, I wish, or a consultant. Even with a subscription, they do tend to turn it into language that we understand and then we know how to apply it to our activities, products and services. And of course, don't forget to communicate the application of these requirements internally and externally, or both, whatever is relevant to your business, to whoever is required to be aware of these. Then the third key point states, C, take these legal requirements and other requirements into account when establishing, implementing, maintaining and continually improving its OHS management system. Absolutely, these legal and other requirements should be embedded into your OHS management system. So they become just the way you operate. These requirements don't sit in a corner with people too scared to go over there. If they are applied and integrated into your OHS management system, it becomes part of your day-to-day -day operations. And of course, it's important to stay up to date with any changes. And then if any changes influence your OHS management system, then it is simply updated. The method you use to determine your relevant requirements will be the method you use to keep up to date with changes. Then finally, the last sentence of this clause states, the organization shall maintain and retain documented information on its legal requirements and other requirements and shall ensure that it is updated to reflect any changes. So if you are implementing a system, please ensure that you have documented information on how this is conducted, as well as evidence of what has been identified and applied. This is not something that should just be kept in your head. It's here in black and white that documented information is to be maintained. So a process and retained, so evidence on your legal and other requirements. Ensure that what you identify and how it's applied can be easily demonstrated through your system, procedures, or even a legal register. And of course, be updated when there are changes, which I have already mentioned earlier on when talking about currency. Right, now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate this within your management system and what it might look like also, seeing as you need to maintain documented information? Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. 
Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.